Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm so excited to bring you five Bumblebee home decor DIYs. Now in these, I'm going to be using my Magnolia stencils quite a bit, but I'm going to also talk about alternatives you could use for completing these projects, whether it be scrapbook paper, stickers, whatever, or just writing with a paint marker yourself. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're going to make this hexagon B sign using three of these wood hexagons from Michaels, a three of these little bumblebees from Hobby Lobby, some chalk paint, and a magnolia stencil called Affirmations. Now, once I removed the stickers from the back of these hexagons, I'm also going to use a little screwdriver and remove the brackets as well as the jute twine hangers and the little staples. Next, I'm taking the Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze, and I'm going to paint the inside of each of my wood hexagons. I'm going to do the back, and then I'm going to come up the edge to the top. So I'm gonna do all of the inside surfaces on each of my three hexagons. Once the yellow paint is dry, I'm now going to take my black chalk paint and I'm going to carefully paint around the front edges of each of my hexagons. And then I am also going to do the outer edge around the outside of each of the hexagons as well. Next, to give a little bit of a distressed look to my piece, I'm going to use my little sander and I'm sanding around that edge between the yellow and the black on the inside of the hexagon. And then I'm also going to do the outer edge all the way around each of my three hexagons. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of wood glue and I'm gonna glue my three hexagons together offset from each other. So I'm putting wood glue where needed and then I'm going to use my clamps from Dollar Tree to clamp these together until they're completely dry. Next, I'm gonna work on painting my three little bees. These are from a set from Hobby Lobby that had also some birds, some flowers, some butterflies. Because the background of the hexagon is yellow, I'm just going to paint the wings on each of my bees white, and then the rest of the bee will be black. Next, I chose these three words from the Affirmations stencil set. I have kind, smart, and brave that I'm using my black chalk paste to stencil on towards the bottom half of each of my hexagons. Next, I'm gonna take each of the little bees that we painted and I'm gonna glue them above the words so that our finished sign will say, be kind, be smart, be brave. For my last step for this project, I wanted to make a beaded hanger. So taking some jute twine, I'm taking these white with black stripes, natural and black beads. I'm gonna string some of them on the twine and then staple it to the back of the project to make the beaded hanger.
If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And also, I hope everyone will tap that bell. Make sure your notifications are set to all so YouTube should let you know each time I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. And if you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for being here. If you've been following me for a while, I would just ask that you go ahead and make sure you are subscribed. As you can see, we're getting very, very close to 91,000 subscribers as we reach towards that 100,000 subscribers mark. For DIY number two, we're going to use a calendar page and one of these square bead hanger signs from Dollar Tree to make a cute little bead decor. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop out the back of this beaded square sign and measure it. It does measure five inches square. I have this cute yellow with white polka dot scrapbook paper in my stash that I thought would go perfectly with the little bee and flower decor that's on the back of this calendar. So the first thing I'm gonna do once I have my scrapbook paper cut is put a layer of Mod Podge on the sign back and then we're going to Mod Podge that scrapbook paper on. I love using the images from these Dollar Tree calendars. If you do not have one, I would just Google B printables and just look for an image online that you can print out. This was the sample one that's on the back, so it's a little bit larger. And I'm gonna trim this down to about two and three quarters inches square. As you can see, this is gonna be super cute on that yellow with white polka dot paper, but I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. So I'm taking one of these rectangular slats and I'm going to cut a two and three quarter inch piece off of it so that I then have a square I can Mod Podge the calendar piece to, and then we'll glue this to the center of our yellow with white polka dot just to make it stand out a little bit more. So now we're just going to pop the backing back into our beaded sign so we can get everything lined up and then we will glue down our smaller wood square with the calendar piece on it. And that's all there is to this project. I love how cute and simple it is. And you can use this idea for any image using these square beaded signs from Dollar Tree. For a complete list of all the tools and supplies I've used in today's projects, click the down arrow or tap the word more next to the title of this video. That will open up the description box where you will not only find the links to my Magnolia Design Co. website and my Amazon storefront, but for each project, you will see a list of the supplies I used. For DIY number three, we're gonna make this welcome to our hive sign using this ruler square sign from target this really cute honey beehive with two bees from walmart and some different paints and ribbons so the first thing i'm doing to the inside of this sign is i'm going to darken it up with some antique wax using the baby wipe method Then taking my black Waverly chalk paint, I'm gonna paint over the little ruler markings that are going all the way around the edge of this frame. It did take uh, two coats to completely cover because the markings and the numbers were just a little tiny bit embossed into the wood. But two coats of the black paint going around the edges and I wasn't able to see that anymore. 
Next, I decided to use this really cute honeycomb pattern all over pattern stencil from Magnolia. I had not used this one yet. So I removed it from the backing. We're gonna get it lined up and pressed down. And then we're going to use some daffodil yellow chalk paste to get the stencil onto the back of our sign. Next, while our sign is drying, I have this beehive with the two bees that I got at Walmart for, I want to say, about $1.62. And it's a decent size. It's like six inches by six inches. I'm going to use that maize chalk paint to carefully paint around the beehive. And then I'll use black and white on the bees and then come back in with a little bit of yellow for some stripes. You can see here I added a little bit of black into the wings and then I'm just going to freehand some stripes with the yellow on the body of the bee to finish off our bees. Next with my beehive down in the corner, not attached yet, I just wanna use it for placement. I'm gonna use this Welcome to Our Porch stencil from Magnolia. I'm just going to, in this first pass, do the word welcome with some white chalk paste. And then I'm gonna move it over a little bit to do the words to our, and then I'm gonna use some alphabet stencils to stencil the word hive. So you'll see here, I'm gonna use some white chalk paste first, move the stencil, use some more white chalk paste, and then lay down my individual letters to spell hive to finish off the sign. Next, while our stencils are drying, we're gonna take some hot glue and we're gonna glue down our wooden beehive to the bottom left corner of our sign. Next, I decided the black frame was a little too plain, so I'm gonna take some black ribbon with white stitching marks and I'm going to glue a length of it 
down the center of each side of our square sign. So here you can see this one is in the center of the top. Then I'll do the right side, the bottom, and the left. Lastly, I decided this project needed a messy bow. So you can see I've layered about four different ribbons in yellows and blacks and this bumblebee one from Dollar Tree at the back. I'm gonna tie a messy bow and we're gonna glue this to the top right corner of our frame. For DIY number four, we're gonna make some blocks that say be happy using six of these rectangular wood blocks from Amazon, some scrapbook paper, and a couple more of my Magnolia stencils. So for one of the blocks, I am going to paint the front of it with my yellow Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze. Next for the other five rectangles, I'm going to cut a three and an eighth of an inch by five and one eighth inch rectangle of scrap of paper. So I'm going to be Mod Podging these onto the fronts of the other five rectangles. Once we have our five rectangles cut, we're going to Mod Podge them onto the front of each of the rectangles of wood. While the Mod Podge is drying on that scrap of paper, I'm gonna take this Always Be Kind stencil and I'm gonna set the block on top of it because the only part of the stencil we're gonna use is this adorable little bee. I'm trying to get it centered as best as I can on the yellow block um, and I'm gonna use my black chalk paste to get it onto the block. I think this bee is so adorable and all I'm gonna do now just to dress up this block a little bit is take some more chalk paste on my squeegee and just outline the edge of the block going all the way around. Once the scrapbook paper was completely dry, the Mod Podge, I'm taking my little sander and I'm gonna go around all four sides of each of my rectangles just in a downward motion to get any extra paper off the edge 
of my blocks and to give it that little white distressed edge. Next, I'm using the slightly larger alphabet. This is a skinny font. These are a little bit larger than the ones that I used to spell hive. We're going to spell happy on these blocks. And with the B block on top, it'll be be happy. Now remember, even though I'm using stencils for the letters on these blocks, you could definitely use some other stencils from Dollar Tree or even the poster sticker letters. If you love budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that lets YouTube know people are enjoying my content. For our fifth and final DIY of this video, we're going to make a Let It Be cutting board using a cutting board from Walmart, this little bee from Hobby Lobby Spring Crafts, and a stencil and some paint. So this is normally marked $1.99. I think I paid $1.20 for it at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to use those same three colors of chalk paint to paint this really cute chunky bumblebee for our cutting board. I decided to leave my cutting board the natural wood color, but of course you could paint it or decoupage it. Also, I'm using just the words let it be from this stencil. And again, remember you could use sticker letters for this step if you'd like. I'm centering the T in the word it, and I'm going to stencil these first two words, then move my stencil so that the word be is in line with these other two words. Now that our B is dry, I'm going to put paint uh, glue on these back wing. That is the furthest back piece of the chunky B, and we're gonna center that here on the bottom part of our cutting board. Then I decided to take a Sharpie and add little dashed lines to show where our B might have flown to get to where it is here. That next, I'm going to make a double loop bow to tie around the handle of our cutting board. This is the last of this B ribbon that I had from Dollar Tree, so I made two loops. I did glue them shut um, at the back, and then I'm just taking some jute twine and tying them together in the center, trying to get it as evenly spaced as possible. So here I am just tying it around the neck of the cutting board and then I will put a little dot of hot glue just to hold it in place.
Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.